children being seen and not heard. They're just having fun, George. I can't think in all this chaos. Welcome to the rather unusual home of the Darling family, where Nana the Nanny, who as you can see is actually a dog, is beginning the usual bedtime routine in the nursery. A few nights ago her routine had been interrupted when she sensed a strange presence. She had sought out the intruder, but had managed only to capture his shadow. Since then she has been on high alert. What have you lost now, George? We're going to be late. My cufflinks! I don't suppose they'd be magically turned into two golden dolphins and swum off across the sea? That's a very inventive idea, George. Well, I think... Ah! Look at my trousers! They're covered in dog hair! I'm so hairy that people in the street will start calling me Rover and throwing me bones. Nana, come here now! I'm surprised you're not completely bald the amount of hair you transferred to me. Liza, Liza! Take this molting menace out of here. Put her in the kennel in the yard. Come on, Nana. I now need to go and shave my trousers. Oh, George, dear, let me help you. Oh, here are your cufflinks. You fill it and scud it out of your sights. Hey, take that one was really grumpy. He reminds me of Captain Hook. Poor Nana, that was so unfair foul. She worked so hard. I even heard Luther say that Nana had captured Peter Pan's shadow the other night. So it is here, Tank. I wish Mother would tell us another story about Peter Pan. Is he real, Wendy? We've never seen him. I know, but sometimes you just know something's real. Night time to sleep, but we want to play. You can play all you want in your dreams. Uh, I'm rather tired too. Perhaps I'll have a little nap and then go and check on Nana. Come on, Tank, we need to search quickly. Here it is, Peter. Look, it's an island who up that's a bit hairy. Now let's go. No, wait. I need to reattach it. But despite his best efforts, the shadow would just not cooperate. Ugh! Oh my goodness, what's happening? Oh, Peter Pan, is it you? Is it really you? Cock a doodle doo! It is you. You're really here. Cock a doodle doo! Peter Pan at your service. Without my shadow though, it won't go back on. I tried everything. Wendy, Mora, Angela, darling, at your service. So Nana really did trap your shadow. Wendy, Moria, Angela, darling. Huh, nobody needs a name that long. I wouldn't like to see the labels onto your clothes. Hey, that's it, Peter. I can sew your shadow back on. I bet that work. You sit there while I get my box of tricks. And Wendy, as always, was as good as her word. There, all done. Thank you. Hey, let me give you something. An acorn necklace. Thank you, Peter. There, Tink. Good as new. Amazing. Can we go back to Neverland now? Sure. How about it, Wendy? You can come too and, and be our mother. What? Whose mother? Mine. And also the lost boy's mother. The lost boy's? Who are they? Come back with us to find out. I'm not sure I want to be anybody's mother. You won't know until you try. Aren't we game for an adventure? Always. Then let's go. Oh, this is too exciting. I must wake Michael and John. Can just, they come too? Just my thought could get any worse. Boys, wake up. Peter Pan's here. He's going to teach us to fly. Are we in a dream, Wendy? Make me Michael. Find out. Oh, I wasn't being that enthusiastic. All right, everyone. Just close your eyes and think really happy thoughts. And just imagine yourself getting up, up, up. Peter, it's not working. What a shame. We'll just have to get out there you. Bye! Wait, Tink, I nearly thought. Fairy dust! <laughs>
Neverland, where minds can roam unchecked and mischievous stories roam free. If you look carefully enough, you may be able to spot some wild warriors with Tiger Lily, the chief's daughter, whose te cheeks glow with pride of her ancestors, and whose wit is so sharp you can practically see the edge of it glimmer in the moonlight. By the spirit of Clattersnap, the great thunderbird, will I slither through the forest and stealthily take out the parts, one by one by one by one. Come, my warriors, let us take them down. And of this sliver, like a giant hungry snake, silent and deadly, but in Neverland, where the page is never blank, there are always more intriguing creations around every corner, or calling out from under every rock. I can feel it in my hook. There's definitely something fishy going on. I can smell it. That's because you've got a sardine in your pocket. Oh yeah, I brought that in case I got a bit peckish. Stick together, boys. Cut this is at the ready. I see. What's what you doing here? I don't think you should talk to your first mate like that. Did you? I'm ready at the perforated bottom. Are you just there to yeah, discuss me? Lads, lads, save for their scary warriors. Captain Jack will need all the help he can get to see them off. Split my infinitive. This is no time to fight amongst ourselves. Get in knife or you'll feel my hook in your gizzards. You hold let us let's sneak up behind him and take him by surprise. Keep your eyes peeled, green parties, or I'll peel them for you. With this nifty peeler attachment I made for my hook. Captain James Hook, Peter Pan's arch enemy. He has Peter to thank for his hook, as it was Peter who got off his hand and threw it to the hungry crocodile. Who liked this so much, he now stalks Hook in the hope of getting seconds and thirds and fourths. Luckily for Hook, the cross cock also ate an alarm clock, so whenever Hook hears it, he is warned that the cock is nearby, and that really shivers his timbers. It sounds just like... That. Yes! 
Over on the Jolly Roger, James Hook is in a melancholy frame of mind, haunted as always by the very existence of Peter Pan. I just popped a batch of your favourites in the oven, Captain. Crabs gone to the hint of sea salt. Oh dear, you don't look very happy. You're not thinking about Peter Pan again, are you? Peter Pan, Peter Pan, that stupid little boy with a pesky pixie for a friend. I, Captain Hook, am the Lord of Neverland. When I get hold of Peter Pan, I'll let him feel the steel. He'll get a closer shave than he's ever had. Begging your pardon, Captain. Well, he's just a boy. In fact, that's kind of the whole point of him. So I don't think he shaves at all. Mr. Snape, you astonish me. Oh, thank you, Captain. I didn't think anything could be sillier than a wonky cart, but you are. I will pay Peter Pan for what he did to me, cutting off my hand and feeding it to that TikTok crop. Not that he's had a taste of me, he wants the rest of me. You could kind of take that as a compliment, Captain. For everything Barnacles, man, I need a plan to capture Peter Pan and his wimpy lost boys. We are pirates, plundering, powerful. Pony? Predatory pirates. They should be no mattress, no silly simpering sausages. Simpletons. Who are we? Is that uh, individually, Captain? Or as a group? <laughs> Mr. Smee, I didn't think you can sing, eh, sing any note in my estimation, but you have. You've done it again, Mr. Smee. I do try my best, Captain. We're better than those pathetic lost boys, aren't we, lads? Aye, <laughs> They are nothing. Nobody's. Um, Non-entities. Ooh. Who are we? The Pirates of the Sea. Who are we? The Pirates of the Sea. The Pirates of the Sea. Smee, Smee! 
As chance would have it, this happens to be about the same time that Peter had decided to take Wendy and the boys to catch a mermaid. And you have to be careful that they don't try to draw you. Look at those shimmering scales. They're so beautiful. I've never noticed. Why is this rock got a post in it? It's Marilla's rock. If you pass them on up to that post, really tightly so they can't get away no matter how hard they try, then the water rises higher and higher and higher. They you know? Oh. Michelle, have you seen that plain girl that Peter's brought to the island? She really loves the toe, Michelle. No shimmer bombshell. No shine, none at all. They need to look at us and watch and learn. They'll never be as good as us. We're perfection. <laughs> which tens of mermaids down to their coral recesses. The sun has gone, but the moon has not come, and there's a sense of e evil looking, lurking around the lagoon. Soon a familiar child is heard.
After Peter's heroic rescue of Tiger Lily from the evil clutches of the pirates on Marina's Rock, the wild warriors swerved to, to protect Peter and the Lost Boys forever from the dastardly crew. As a disgruntled Wendy and Tinkerbell look on jealously, Tiger Lily and the warriors conduct a special ceremony to swear Peter and loyalty to him. Finally, the celebrations draw to an end, and the great leader proudly takes his new possessions back to Hangman's Tree. But as in the way in Neverland, as one chapter is closing, another will be opening close by. And so we find some pirates, cutlasses drawn once again, prowling the island, looking for Peter's hideout. Yo ho ho! Yo ho ho! It's a pirate's life for me! Tree, the boys are waiting for the great hunter to return, and here he comes, sack in hand. What booty has he back tonight? What's in the bag, Peter? Oh, just a wolf. He thought he thought he might eat me. I had other ideas, of course. What a beauty! That must be quite a battle. Here, take some of my very own homemade tonic to renew your strength. There could be another story, Wendy. Make one up for us. You mean, Mother? Story, 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 story. All right, there once was a man. I wish it had been a lady. I wish it had been a white rat. Quiet, there was a lady as well. The man's name was Mr. Darling, and the lady's name was Mrs. Darling. And what do you think they had? White rats? No, they had three children. And these three children had a faithful nanny called Nana, who was a dog. One night, Mr. Darling put her, her Nana outside in the yard, and so the children flew away to Neverland, where the lost boys are. I thought they did. I don't know why, but I thought they did. Oh, Wendy, was one of the boys called Toodles? Yes, he was. Nibs, I'm in a story. I am. I'm in a story. And when the parents came home from their evening out, all the beds were empty, all the children gone. Imagine his poor parents discovering all their children had flown away. Oh, how worried they must have been. I can hardly bear to think about it. It's awfully sad. Let's go back. You're not going to leave us, Wendy, are you? I think we must. Our parents must be so very sad. We won't let you go. Why don't you all come with us? I'm sure Mother and Father would be happy to adopt you. Can we go, Peter? If you want. You all need your coats. Hurry, Peter. I'm not coming. Not coming? Come on, Peter. Peter's not coming. But why, Peter? I just always want to stay young and have fun. Well then, goodbye, Peter. Here's the rest of the tonic. Don't forget to take it. Don't worry, I will. Oh, just for you, you little word. Tell me all, Missy. Ow, that's hot. Oh, Split my bananas. I have them at my mercy. So the boy just wants to have fun, does he? I'm sure death will be an awfully big adventure. Mary James Hook, how will you dispatch him? Let me think, this is a moment to savor. Tink, Tinkerbell. Would you go and check off that they've got all right, would you? That would be my pleasure. Let me take a little peek. Slice me onions. It's made for children, but I can just reach that little glass there. Ah, uh, James Hook, you're a genius. I'll drop a little bit of deadly poison into that glass. There'll be a moment of Peter panic, and a dead will die of unknowingly and unheroic death. Now I'm back to my ship from, for those children from walking the plank from plank to plankton. I wonder what he was doing here. Oh no, maybe that's why I couldn't find it. Peter, Peter, wake up, I couldn't find that. So where can they be? Um, I saw Captain Hook outside here. Maybe he has something to do with it. I bet he's kidnapped Wendy and the boys. I must rescue them. I need all the strength I can get. My tonic, where's my tonic? Peter, don't drink it. Look at it, it's red. It's a 
something's wrong. Oh, don't mind Wendy. You're just jealous because Wendy made it for me. No, Peter. <gasps> oh, dear. It was poisoned. Dear Tinkerbell, you drank that to save me. What am I going to do? Tinkerbell! She, she said everyone could get well again if everyone believed in fairies. Do you believe in fairies? Yes! yes. I can't hear you. Yes. yes! Come on, Tink. This time it's final. It's hook or me. Over on that ship whose name alone strikes fear into the hearts of men, Captain Hook and his gleeful crew are in celebratory mood. They are anticipating some planky pranks and jolly pirate japes. Mr. Smee has even baked some of his irresistible signature macaroons. That'll teach you to swipe one of, one of Mr. Smee's macaroons without asking. Now you've got plenty of drink to go with it. Well, that's done. I think it's time for Johnny Plank to join us. Ah, uh, Johnny Plank. It's been a while since we've seen him. Go back to Mr. Smee. Go up a carbonate of soda. This is a happy night. I'll go check on those macaroons. Do you need a hand? It's the captain who needs a hand. Shh. You better not let me hear you say that. Oh, if I were cool. Oh, I know. I tripped over him and then thought how much more useful he would be as a shelf. A what? A shelf. So somewhere to keep stuff like Baker of the Week award that Captain gave me for my macaroons. Well, that'll teach you to swipe. Uh, wait, no. Well, you're just gonna have to um, move your stuff off him pretty quickly. Oh, if I must. Do you think the Captain will realize I painted him pink? Pink? You painted Johnny the night pink. You know the Captain hates pink. Oh, Smee, you've just done and done it again. <laughs> Bring up the prisoners. Soon we'll be underway sailing the seven seas. Sit them there so they can discuss their fate. Goodbye, Rod. Goodbye, sweet boys. No time for all that. Hurry along, little missy. Little missy? Don't be little missy me. I've learned to fly designed a house made up my own recipe for tonic, for for mermaid, and made up some of the best stories ever. I'm no little missy. I'm strong. I'm invincible. I am Wendy. Pam, but you're, you're dead? Huh. Then you should be even more afraid. I might be a ghost. Woo! <laughs> Ready, boys? Have it at him! <laughs> You'll need to sprinkle plenty of fairy dust. This will be a big ship to fly. Where are we going, Peter? To London, of course. Despite still being a hairy thing, has been allowed back into the nursery by a Mr. Darling who feels very guilty. If only I hadn't thrown you out that night, Nana, then maybe you could have stopped Peter Pan tempting our children away to Neverland. If only I had known about him and his shadow. But for now, it is I who must live in the kennel as a sign of my regret. George, there's really no need. I can't do things by halves, Mary. You know that. So the kennels will be till they come home. Let's leave the window open as always and try to get some sleep. They're in here and they look like they've been waiting for us. I think we'll arrive just in time. I thought we might. Oh my goodness. 
Wendy's. Is that Father in the panel? Oh, I thought I heard Wendy's voice. It must have just been in a dream. Mother! We're home! George, Nana, they're home. They're really home. At last, our little family's all back together. Oh, Wendy, what about the Lost Boys? Oh my goodness, I've almost forgotten. Lost Boys? What Lost Boys? From another round, Father. What do you think, Nana? <laughs> Let's invite them in. And so, all in a moment, the darling household was practically doubled and the nursery was once again filled with dragons and castles and all the wonderful stuff of imagination. and work in an office. Well, that's all part of growing up. Then I'll go back to Neverland. Wendy, will you ever go back there? I don't know, Mother. But something of Neverland will always be with me. And who knows? Now that I learned to fly, I imagine I'll never forget. Oops! Sorry, Nana. Can I invite Kettle back now, please? No! 